Hey guys, welcome to an unprecedented Tuesday upload. I don't think I have ever uploaded a video on a Tuesday. Today, the reason we have a video on a Tuesday, and there will still be a video on Friday, but the reason we have a video on a Tuesday is that I am doing something that I normally just do for my patrons on Patreon, and that is a critique of one of your pieces of artwork. And usually every month on Patreon, I do a call for entries and everybody sends in work that they would like to have critiqued, and then on Patreon, all of my patrons vote on which piece they want me to do a critique video about. This month there were no on-time submissions, which has never happened before, but I decided to just uh, look on the bright side and make something positive out of it and uh, put a call for entries or call for art out on Instagram. And I did this in my Instagram stories. A bunch of you guys sent stuff in and I just chose the, well, I didn't choose. I went with the top, uh, ugh, the top. The first, the first eight of you to submit pieces automatically had those put onto a ballot, a little visual ballot, and then I had you guys vote on which ones you wanted me, which one you wanted me to do a critique video of. So I decided to do a video about the top two picks, your top two picks from that ballot. And those are this piece and this piece. And you can find the info for, about both of the artists and their usernames and all of that in case you want to go follow them on Instagram. And I suggest that you at least check out their work, um, give them a few likes, some comments, and please, uh, if you are following me on Patreon, if you're a supporter on Patreon, you've heard me say this like a million times, but please be really kind to them in the comments, whether you're on their Instagram feeds or here in the video comments, because it takes a lot of courage and a lot of guts to put your work out there to receive a critique. So. Um, I never, it really makes me sad to think that anybody would do that and then um, get really negative feedback or mean-spirited feedback. So um, yeah, please give them all the love and pats on the back and thumbs up, high fives, all of that good stuff um, in the comments here and in the comments on their feeds. So we're going to start with this piece, the, uh, the squash, which as you can see in the background, I have pulled up here on my computer. First off, the number one thing that I see that is working well, and I feel like I almost always say this uh, in an illustration that's trying to be realistic since you guys are just so good uh, is that the overall proportions are really really strong so uh, it looks realistic it looks like a squash there's nothing that I see here that is really out of balance out of proportion and that's whether I'm looking at it on its own or next to the reference image overall the proportions are solid I also think that the color in the slice is really accurate really spot-on looks very much like the reference image uh, and really has a very realistic feel. Another overall thing that I think is just working well is the texture. I think that this artist has a, probably a naturally textured hand or has developed a textural hand. I really love the texture that's on the surface of the squash and uh, I think it adds a lot of interest, a lot of visual interest to the piece. And one last little thing that I think is really a plus in this piece, and I'm not sure if you will have spotted it yet with the side-by-side -side of the reference image, but the artist has actually change the stem. So the stem in the reference is totally flat and the artist has made a decision to um, actually create a stem that has more dimension and it's taller and I think that that adds a lot to this subject actually. It just makes it look um, more, I, I feel like it makes the squash look more fresh, more connected to nature and I really like the result of adding that stem. Okay so moving on to what could improve next time, what could be better if the artist wanted to keep working on this piece or if they want to make another piece similar to this one sometime in the future. So the first point here is I think that uh, while the colors overall work well together and if you wanted the color story to be what you have here I think it would be a fine color story but if the aim is for realism if the aim is for it to be um, more realistic probably some of the darker greens especially well actually the green overall is a bit too saturated so if you compare it with the reference image you see that the green in the reference is really pretty muted. The yellow in the reference is very saturated and so that might be part of why there's the temptation to make the green more saturated because there is that really saturated yellow. But uh, if you do want it to be realistic, then I would knock down the saturation of the green, particularly uh, in some of these shadow areas. And the inverse of that, I think the uh, seed area in the slice could actually use a bit more saturation. So the seeds themselves look pretty close to me in terms of the saturation level, but the shadow areas of the seeds, like uh, kind of these little pockets here, those look like they could be quite a bit more saturated. So uh, here it looks 
looks like the artist has chosen to just darken those areas, which does work. But if you want to get that kind of like glowing effect that you see in the reference, the shadow areas need to have some more saturation as well as more darkness. Well, they don't need any more darkness. They just need more saturation. And the last thing that I'll say about this piece is that I think uh, the highlights, like the shadows in the green area, are just a bit too saturated. They're calling a lot of attention to themselves. They're like a really, really vivid, bright green. And if you look at the reference, there is obviously the green undertone in the shadows, but it's really very muted and very soft as well. I think if I'm looking closely here, it looks like there was some sort of paint pen or maybe gouache that was used on the surface. I think that this sort of highlight that's here it's not a hard highlight. It's like a really soft kind of reflected highlight. I think that that could have been achieved a little bit better with uh, with like a white colored pencil or maybe a, um, a white oil pastel or excuse me, a white uh, water soluble wax pastel that could have been blended out and softened quite a bit. So I think that, yeah, that highlight there could be knocked down in saturation level and then smoothed out so it has more of that softer diffuse light. Uh, same thing uh, here in this little back side of the squash. Since uh, there is a light source, uh, the light source, the stronger light is coming from this left-hand side of the squash. That is the lighter area, but because it's in a white environment especially, there's some reflected highlight coming up on the back of the slice of the squash. And it's the same kind of highlight that we see on the top of the squash. It's more muted, it's softer, it's pretty desaturated. So I think the, the side of the slice could use that same treatment. Okay, on to the next piece. And what's working well here, just as in the first illustration, the overall proportions are quite strong. It looks realistic. Um, for the most part, I don't see anything in terms of the drawing or the structure that needs to be changed. There is one little thing that we'll mention in just a minute, but uh, overall, it, the, the drawing, the proportions are very strong. I think that the base of the glass, this area here, this has all been done in watercolor. I think that that looks just beautiful. I mean, overall, the treatment, the handling of watercolor is really nice, really delicate. But my favorite moment so far in this painting is this little base of the glass here. It's obvious that the artist has just really paid very, very close attention and is taking their time with something that might be considered kind of one of the more boring elements. The, the star of the piece, obviously, is the ice cream, but you can see how much care the artist put into the base of the glass, into the glass itself, and I really like that. Another thing that I think is working well is the artist has gotten a lot of different uh, values and tones in the caramel sauce, and you can see that it's very clearly that it's pressing up against the glass and kind of curving around the side of the cup. Uh, I think that's a real strength in the piece right now as well. So moving on to what could be improved in this piece or in another piece in the future, I think uh, this is the one structural drawing proportional element uh, that is a little bit off here and that is the right side of the top ellipse. Right now it looks like it kind of goes up and the back edge of it especially should go down quite a bit more um, in order to really give that sense of it being a round glass. The next thing I think could be improved a little bit in this piece or in a future piece is the overall value story in the ice cream. So uh, right now in the image or in the sorry in the illustration the ice cream is pretty uniformly light. There are a few small shadow areas, a few little tiny darker areas, but if you kind of squint your eyes and you look at it, mostly the ice cream is all in the light value, the light end of the value spectrum. Now, if you look at the reference image and you do the same thing, kind of squint your eyes, especially this part down here, the part that's bumping up against the glass is quite a bit darker. And then this right side of the ice cream, while it does have little pockets and little shadows in there, overall, that whole right side is quite a bit darker as well. So uh, the result of that, the result of having values that are a bit off, that are more skewed towards the lighter end, is that the image, that, that part of the image can read is a little bit flat. So if you were to deepen some of the values in this side of the ice cream and uh, in the front part of the ice cream that curves around the glass, you would have much more of a, a three-dimensional result, something that really feels more like it has weight and uh, a sense of form in real life. All right, the last thing, this is kind of more of a matter of taste. I don't think there's particularly anything wrong with the way the artist executed the pour. 
but you can see in the reference image that uh, there's a little pitcher that's pouring the caramel sauce. And in the illustration, the caramel sauce just seems like it's coming from nowhere. And to me, that makes it a little bit ambiguous as to what it actually is. Is it a pour? Is it like a stick of caramel that's sticking up out of the ice cream? Uh, personally, if I were doing this piece, uh, if I were given that reference image and asked to create an illustration, I definitely would not include the pour, uh, just because it, uh, or, or I would not include the pour without the pitcher. I'll say it that way. It just introduces some ambiguity and uncertainty about what's actually happening in the image and especially if you're trying to create uh, believable realism that can be a little bit counterproductive. Okay, so uh, that is it for this video. Uh, thank you again to everybody who submitted work. Uh, thank you to my patrons who support this channel and have made it possible for me to create this kind of video for them every single month and uh, for you here this is uh, an extra video this week. There will be a normal video, I think, a vlog, as usual, um, this Friday. So uh, please do check back then. And um, yes, who else do I need to thank? Well, I mean, I always thank Meg, but I actually edited this video myself for once. So um, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks to patrons. Thanks to you guys. I hope everybody is having a wonderful Tuesday, and I will see you on Friday. Bye.